creation story now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with man is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Sages, leave your contemplations, brighter visions beam afar. See the great desire of nations, ye have seen his natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Brothers and sisters, receive that grace of God who has come for you, for he is here, and he is with us, and he is our Lord, come to save. Amen. Would you take time now to greet one another on this Christmas morning? Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth. Christmas, we celebrate God coming in the flesh. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the life and light by which all hope, peace, joy, and love come to us from God. This is the light of the world. On this blessed Christmas day, we light the Christ candle to proclaim he is here. Emmanuel, God with us, has come and he is coming again. Jesus is the light of the world. 
Well, Jesus is God with us. Isaiah 60, 1 through 3 and 18 through 20. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. No longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin or destruction within your borders. But you will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The sun will no longer be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine upon you. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set again, and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light. And your days of sorrow will end. Let us join together in Christmas praise reciting these gospel words from John 1. The true light. Let's rise and bow your spirits. We continue to sing. Let us adore him, oh come 
let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. by Langston Hughes. Tell me again the Christmas story. Christ is born in all his glory. Baby born in manger dark, lighting ages with the spark of innocence that is the child, trusting all within his smile. Tell me again the Christmas story. The halo of his glory. Halo born of humbleness. By the breath of cattle blessed, by the poverty stall, where a bed of straw is all. By a door closed at the inn, only men of means get in. By a door closed to the poor, Christ is born on earthen floor. In a stable with no lock, yet kingdoms tremble at the shock of a king in swaddling clothes. At an address no one knows, because there is no painted sign. Nothing but a star divine. Nothing but a halo bright about his young head in the night. Nothing but the wondrous light of innocence that is the child, trusting all within his smile. Mary, son of golden star, wise men journey from afar. Mary's son in manger born, music of the angel's horn. Mary's son in straw and glory, wonder of the Christmas story.
the seasons can spin fast and louder and faster. The whole thing can fly by in a blur and you can get dizzy, lost, missing something, someone you can't seem to find. And in the midst of the seasons, loud cells and big spectacles and its fast pace, what we're looking for, who we're looking for, becomes small, shows up in this fetal ball, the micro macro miracle, who comes in the whisper and says, wise men still seek me. The mystery so large becomes the baby so small, infinite God becomes infant. Who ever heard of such a thing, a thing not to be missed, that a God wanted such intimacy with us, that he came with such vulnerability to us? What God ever came so tender we could touch him, so he could touch us? A fragile infant who we could break, so he could heal our brokenness. So vulnerable that his bare heart could be hurt. Only the one who loves us to death could do this. He who gave up the heavens that were not even large enough to contain him, who lets himself be held in a hand. He could have come in a day, but God gestates. He comes slow. He is made and formed over a season. And over this season, he invites you to slow, be still, be remade, be transformed. Come slow over the season. Let the warm breath of heaven fall on you. Behold God, who waits to be held. Feel the lightness. When Christmas becomes a burden, it's lost something of Christ. God comes as a babe because grace is weightless. Grace is weightless. He came to do it all. So you are most prepared for Christmas when you are done trying to make your performance into the gift and instead revel in his presence as the gift. It's what Christmas is about. God doing whatever it takes to be with us and our doing whatever it takes to be with him. He climbed down from the throne in heaven to get to us, climb over the throes of Christmas to get back to him. Everyone everywhere looks forward to Christmas, races fast to find something, someone at Christmas. And in the midst of the holiday pace, and there's a little slowing to make space. When we make space, there is peace. There is Christ, the one at the center of every single Christmas, whether we see him or miss him. God with us. Those words could beat in our hearts as we slow, slow so we don't miss him. Slow and not miss the coming of him in the manger who nourishes us near start. Slow and not miss him in the swaddlings who makes himself the robe of righteousness for us worn out. Slow and not miss him who makes precisely what none of us can make. What all of us want. Christmas. Slow and not miss him who comes to you. The greatest gift. Let's rise the body of your spirit. Christ by eyes have not door. 
Christ, the everlasting Lord, late in time, behold him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh, the God at sea, hail incarnate deity, please as man with man to dwell, Jesus, our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Hail the heavenly Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness, light and life to all He brings, risen with healing in His way. While he lays his glory by, born that we no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn Earthed by Jeremy Williams. Ring a bell, call a parade, get this on the evening news. Let everything on earth and beneath the earth and above it and everything in the sea too, from the oak to the octopus, bees, bears, birds, buffalo, bacteria, and human beings, take notice. We have an announcement. The waiting is over, the gap is breached. Tell the lame they will dance, and the blind they will see rainbows. Tell the oppressed they will be free, and the poor they will be rich. Tell the meek their earth is ready. Tell darkness its days are numbered, and its minions to flee. Tell the warmongers that peace will overtake them, and cover their battle tanks in dust. Let the wind shake the forest, and ripple praise across the grasslands. Let the mountaintops sparkle with joy. Your God is for you, your God is with you, and let all creation sing his welcome. But whisper it, the baby's sleeping. Let's rise and sing Gloria, Gloria in excelsis Theo.
Heavenly Father, we know you by your giving. And today we celebrate the giving of your Son. We pray that, Lord Jesus, as we receive your presence, your being with us to give your life for us, Lord Jesus, may we take your word to heart today and so give you praise. Amen. I've heard this story for over 60 years now, and thankfully, good news never gets old. So let us rise in body and spirit to hear the gospel reading, and let us ponder and treasure it in our hearts. From Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest of heavens, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds told one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in, their, in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God, for all the things they had seen and heard, which is just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. We grew up uh, thinking that first Christmas, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus were alone on their own in a strange, unfriendly, inhospitable town when Jesus is born in a dark and cold and lonely stable. No room in the inn lingers in our minds about the Christmas story. And nativity films, Christmas programs and plays, our children's Bible storybooks, and our Christmas carols play on this theme over and over. Thou didst leave thy throne and thy kingly crown when thou camest to earth for me. But in Bethlehem's home was there found no room for thy holy nativity. O oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. The children's storybook Bible reads this way. When Mary and Joseph reached the little town, they found every room was full. Every bed was taken. Go away, the innkeeper told them. There isn't any place for you. Where would they say? Soon Mary's baby would come. They couldn't find anywhere except an old tumble-down stable. So they stayed where the cows and the donkeys and the horses stayed. 
we can easily imagine this because we are more lonely than we admit. It's the American way to make it on our own. It's shown in our fallen natures. Even as toddlers, we get it and we insist to mommy or daddy, I'll do it myself. Let me do it. We are hesitant to share our struggles. We think part of suffering means to suffer privately. For the most part, we think adulting means to go it alone. After all, look at the first Christmas. There's no room at the end. There's a stable out back. We won't bother anybody there. So are you lonely this Christmas? The list of popular Christmas songs about loneliness is long. I'll have a blue Christmas without you. Please come home for Christmas. Just a lonely, lonely Christmas. What a glad one it would be if only my loved one would come back to me. Won't you beckon to our lonely Christmas call? Are you singing those songs in your head and your heart? Will anyone hear our plaintive song? But Christmas invites us to something new. A newer carol sings, born where the shadows lie, to answer every cry of man. This child who formed all life now breathes our breath. Jesus is life's light in our lament of loneliness. Psalm 25 speaks generally for the human condition and personally for you, maybe even today. Psalm 25, verse 16, Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. So simply know, if you are suffering from loneliness, this is not abnormal. It is a broken condition of life that most everyone suffers at some time in their lives. But also know it's not forever. God did not create us to be lonely. From the beginning, he ordered creation in the divine knowledge and wisdom that said it is not good for humans to be alone. Loneliness is a result of our fall into sin. That's not to say you're lonely because of the sins you have committed. Being lonely is not a punishment from God. It's the result of all that is broken and has gone wrong because of sin. God's will does not include you remaining lonely. For Psalm 68 declares God sets the lonely in families. The grace of the Lord God is for us to belong. To belong to the Lord and to belong to his people. Jesus understands loneliness. The scripture reading today tells us that Jesus came to be with us. God with us, God one of us, in order to restore us. And we'll get reminders of that throughout the gospel story. Jesus himself promising, I'm with you always. I will come back to take you to be with me. I have called you friend. To receive this, though, we have to hear the real Christmas story. Not the made-up version that most of us think of when we think of that first Christmas. When most of us think and recall the Christmas story, we may think it happened something like this. Mary and Joseph hurry into a crowded Bethlehem because Mary is either due to deliver at any moment or already in birth pains. In a strange town, they look for the local inn to stay for the night, but it's already crowded because of the census, so they have nowhere to go. They are allowed to stay in the barn, though, and there Jesus is born in a cold, lonely, strange place. Dr. Kenneth Bailey reminds us that that telling of the story has more to do with apocryphal and extra-biblical writings than the true gospel story. Remember, Joseph belonged to the house and line of David. 
That means he traces his family ancestry back to King David in David's town, Bethlehem. And that's where he's going. He is going to Bethlehem because that's the family home of David. So when Joseph shows up in Bethlehem, he shows up in a place of welcome and belonging. He would not have been treated as a stranger. Even if he was unknown, he was family. He and Mary would have been welcomed into a family home despite the crowds. The word Luke uses in verse 7 is best translated guest room. The thought, no room in the end, goes back to the old King James Bible and was retained in some later English versions. But if Luke wanted to say that, if he wanted to use the word to say the local hotel didn't have room, he would have used a different Greek word. The word he does use means another room in the house, like, like a guest room or, or the spare room. A typical home in Palestine looks something like this. There was a spare room, kind of a guest room off to the side, and then there was that main family living room area where everything happened and including where the family slept at night and then there was a stable area out back kind of like our garages where the animals were brought in at night to protect them from being stolen or wandering off or from wild animals and also to add some heat to the main room because so many had come to Bethlehem because of the Roman census no doubt the home in which Joseph and Mary stayed was full the guest room, the word Luke uses, already had people there. So Joseph and Mary would have stayed with the family in the main living area. Most likely Jesus was born there. The baby placed in the manger, the feeding trough, there inside on the dividing wall between the family room and the back stable. The result. When Jesus is born, the care of God is revealed. Jesus was born surrounded in covenant family. Jesus was born in, in the grace of belonging. God honored the care offered by those in that home. What they gave was what they could, and it was enough. This is the grace and truth of the gospel at Christmas, God is with us. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the Word of life. Those aren't words of loneliness and being alone. They are words of welcome belonging and being together. Our Heavenly Father redeems this lonely planet and people in the giving of His Son at Christmas. The coming of Jesus awakens the goodness of welcome and hospitality and fellowship among God's people. So wonder about this. When Joseph and Mary arrive in Bethlehem, they would be welcomed as those belonging and glad you're home. He was of the family of David. They would be graciously taken in. And you know, we know even today how long it takes to file government papers, so they were there a while. Days or weeks, and in that time it was time for the baby to be born. When that happened, because the house was full of guests, Plan B had to be set into operation. The men would be shooed out of the house to give Mary some privacy. The women would have stayed to help, most likely calling in a midwife to assist. When Jesus was born, they couldn't just put him in a guest room. That was already full. There were people walking all around. You can't put a baby on the floor. The safest place is in the manger. Add some fresh bedding straw to keep him warm and place him there. Jesus was born surrounded by care and family and home. 
advance. But Christmas invites us to remember and to yearn for and to serve by our own welcome and hospitality and care. For this care comes from God, not from Caesar. And this is the good news for us. We who find ourselves on the road, yearning for home, uncertain, crying, why now? Feeling there's no room for me, and where do I belong? Wondering what we could possibly contribute. God cares. Christmas tells us we may rest in the loving hand of the Lord. Even when it looks like no one cares, God cares. Care is not absent. God is provided. Our Father will bless our attempts to care also. Multiplying and spreading our offerings of welcome, acceptance, and hospitality throughout the kingdom of God. Anytime we, we help a neighbor or a friend or family or a stranger. So I'm thinking about the ways, the opportunities, the invitations I had in this past year to be welcoming, to be accepting. Some were not so easy. Some were not convenient. Sometimes caring too much for too many makes one weary. But when I return these to the Lord, with thanks for those opportunities to remember Christ coming for me, I remember in those moments I am closer to Jesus than any other times. Even if I don't feel it or experience it, I know that to be true. So we have to learn yet to treasure these opportunities, to be generous with our time, with our money and our means, with our hearts and our homes. This Mary treasures and ponders in her heart, the hospitality of God, the welcome and belonging the Christ child brings to you and me who lament our loneliness. Mary could have been alone as she carried Jesus, but Elizabeth was there for her. Joseph sacrificed for her. Bethlehem welcomed her. The shepherds rejoiced with her. This is the grace of God. It's different than anything else in the world. While Mary is treasuring these things, the arrival in Bethlehem, despite Roman rule, the care of neighbors, the adoration and wonder of shepherds, and her story of the angels, the birth of the child who would save the world, while Mary is keeping these things close as they form her heart in God's saving grace, Caesar's plotting taxes and war. Herod is disturbed and seeking to wipe out a rival, and many aren't even hoping for something new from God. See the loving difference. Jesus is with us to make us whole. For if people are lonely today, deep down at the root of that loneliness, is that many are lonely for God. Julian Barnes speaks for this buffered age when he says, I don't believe in God, but I miss him. And the one thing the church is still here for is to unite people to Christ and one another by the gospel of grace. So belonging to God here and for eternity defeats the cosmic loneliness that sin has brought on this world. So how can we respond in thankfulness this Christmas day? Well, Jesus gives us the freedom to lament and confess our loneliness. Don't hide it or keep it a secret. Name it for what it is in the presence of the Lord and among his people so that we may be responsive to accepting Christ's merciful presence. 
If instead of saying there's something wrong with me because I'm lonely, what if we saw it differently? What if we thought there's something right with me because I can feel it, I can feel I'm lonely. And I realize I've made for connection. And I need to step out and grow and seek other people who can help me on this journey. Where is God when you are lonely? He's right next to you. Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. God said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. So prayer, too, is a healthy response to our loneliness. Not just asking for things, but being still before God and letting his presence speak to you. Robert Putnam in Bowling Alone invites people to get back to church. He says, faith communities in which people worship together are arguably the single most important repository of social capital in America. So keep praying for a way to bring those you know back to church with you. In your life group or among friends, discern who may be lonely. Widows, recently divorced, those who moved into senior homes, those new to your neighborhood, university students. Decide how you can start actively seeking to partner with them, to include them. For many lonely people ache for a kind of relational commitment. So be verbal, get specific, follow through, offer to serve as someone's emergency contact or say things like, you know, every other Tuesday we want to get together and not always at our house. You see someone sitting alone at church, offer to sit next to her or him and worship together. A lonely and alone person writes, if I could send one text to three individuals that have committed to me when a need arises, that would bring relief and security to me. And being part of such a group would allow me to help them too. And I feel I'd have a connection. So this Christmas, tell the whole story. Tell the loving story of the one God who responded to our loneliness by coming to live with us. This Lord ascended to prepare a place for us. He said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back to take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Belonging. Welcomed home. You are not alone, for God is with you. That's the promise of Christmas. Bring us close to you, Lord. Gather us with the light of your presence, bright within this dark world. Enable us to be overcomers of fear and temptation. Enable us to be victors over sin and despair. Enable us to become that which you would desire, Lord of creation, Lord of salvation. Draw us near to you. God, one of us, God, with us. Welcome us home, Lord. Embrace our family within the shelter of your kept promises. Protect each and every moment of their daily lives. Protect each in the decisions that we face. Protect our homes and relationships. Lord of creation, Lord of salvation, welcome us home in the light of your presence. Prince of Peace, Lord, heal this nation with Christmas love and hope. Create a desire to receive and respond to the gospel. Create a willingness to understand and respond. Create a need to yield to the Christ child. Lord of creation, Lord of salvation, bring us 
with the light of your presence. Restore to us the joy of your salvation, Lord. So we place our hope in your coming again to judge the living and the dead. Make all things new where there is sickness and disease. Make all things new where there is hunger and despair. Make all things new where there is injustice and oppression. Forgive us our sin. Set us free. Restore the captives. Protect the oppressed. Provide for the home, for those who are homeless. And Lord of creation, Lord of salvation, King of kings, come quickly to make all things new. Amen. Remember Sunday we had the kids up here 
uh, coloring and making ornaments, and they're all up here displayed now, so you can see uh, their offerings that they have brought to. Our offering today is for Roseland Christian Ministries. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for Roseland Christian Ministries and the work they do to further your kingdom. Please be with your staff at Roseland in the community it serves and bless the funds that we give. Thank you. Amen.
ties together, body, spirit, to go in the grace of God. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come and has redeemed his people because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet in the paths of peace. brightly shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth Thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder grace, a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, O oh, hear the angel voices. Christ is the Lord. 